Ice is watching Hercules. Oh, why, please? That was a 15. 15. Roger. One of the things that's pretty neat is that we, you know, we've seen a few organisms as we've come up this slope, but the entire slope is also covered with lots and lots of uh, microbial life that, that we can't see with the naked eye, but there's, you know, life, you know, finds a niche wherever it can, and, uh, and microbes are, are great at uh, sort of adapting to these different environments, so I would not be surprised if if uh, there's great diversity of microbial life on the rocks and, and in the sediments. Uh, it's like you read, the, read one of my questions <laughs> right from my screen. So at this depth, no one's ever seen a, a volcanic eruption occur at this depth. It's not clear, you know, what exactly it would look like. Uh, there's chance that that you would be kind of heating this water up uh, and and causing it to to boil, or maybe it goes to a supercritical fluid rather than boiling because of, of the, you know intense pressure on it uh, but uh, you know eruptions are happening in the in the oceans all the time but it's so uh, you have to be extremely lucky to to be able to see one in action oh there's another stocked crinoid yeah mm -hmm. I was surprised by that Brasingia just kind of sitting by itself back there without too much vantage from any organism. Yeah. At least Good. the stocked ones have some. Go do a partial in there, please, Dave. An organism like this is a filter feeder. One of the reasons it has oh, the stalk is so it can get up into the flow of water. And one of the reasons it might be on a seamount like this is because the kind of change from a flat seafloor to a, a big structure like this will cause uh, kind of the currents to, to move up the slope and, uh, and bring with it nutrients and, and uh, food for these uh, filter feeders. Had a question about whether the stalk thing we just saw was a plant, but it is an animal. You gotta move your microphone up. We can't hear you. I have a question for Jessica. Yeah. So what are the things you're thinking about when you're piloting an ROV up a slope like this? What are you looking out for? When we're piloting, sorry, up a slope? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, a lot of it's looking at our sonars, so making sure, you know, we have Argus a little bit higher in the water column so we can really see what's going to be coming up ahead eventually, you know? So a lot of it's checking sonars, Checking sub bottoms, um, a lot of looking at uh, those returns. Also, we have, I don't know if you can see it between Rennie and I, but there's a DVL, USBL hit screen. We switch between Doppler and USBL depending on the situations. Um, but that gives us more of a awareness of where we are with relation to the vehicles and with relation to the ship. Um, when we're this steep, we also really look at that and see how much kind of layback we have in the cables and things like this. 
uh, you know, you're just kind of taking it all in and uh, piecing together a little map as to where you are with relation to the slope. When they talk about staying in the box, what does that mean? Oh, in the box, um, you can kind of see Kirk's tether between on the Argus cam there. Um, so the bounding box can either be defined by the camera view of Argus, um, and you can like usually set that based on how far you've tilted it forward. Um, so I know that if I'm too far off to the left of this little box that we have there, Maybe I want to come a little bit to the right or vice versa. Okay. Um, but that's kind of a good visual aid for us as well. A viewer would like to know if there are hydrophones on the ROVs. No, there are not, because you'd probably just hear a lot of thruster noise. <laughs> you'd hear a lot of ROV sounds <laughs> and not a lot of... We've, we've placed them down on the seafloor before, both battery-operated ones and uh, ones that were connected to a larger power and fiber array. Uh, specifically for o Ocean Networks Canada, um, and then we've we have recordings of Hercules, you know, placing the sensor and then driving away, essentially. Ooh, what's that creature there? Looks like an, an enemy. An enemy. We sampled this last dive, actually. Yeah, yeah with the slurp. Actually, this is a good, <laughs> a uh, good one. range observation and depth observation. I would imagine that Steve would be interested in. Let's take a look. He was saying they sampled one on the Line Islands. Actually, I think we were on that cruise in 2019. And then we just sampled one on the last cruise within the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument boundaries uh, when we were on a cruise permitted to be within that. Um, but I don't, push on in there, please. I don't believe we would have had one from this depth because we don't often go to a depth that's close to our limit but I don't know if Steve has seen it collected or um, imaged this deep from other systems. Sarah, do you remember the name of it? I don't, yeah. no. All right, thanks Dave, full wide please. Be worth passing along to Steve, see if he knows anything about it. Sure, yeah. I noted the depth on the observations. Yeah. One of the ways we'll approach the kind of exploration of this is we're, we'll do similar dives on a few of these seamounts starting deep and moving up. So simply noting that that anemone is there, uh, we'll consult with the, the biological experts on board and on shore, and, and if they're excited about it, uh, we can make sure to put it on the list to collect a sample of as we come across it again. You mentioned the slurp sampler. Could you explain how that works for our viewers? The uh, slurp, yeah. so how the slurp sampler works? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a mini vacuum, if you will, underwater. Um, and we have some slurp jars. You'll probably see them come up and We'll switch camera views when we do slurp sampling. Uh, we have a little hose and we stick the hose out and throw on a vacuum and uh, can kind of aspirate around and get the animals that we want. And then they get collected into a jar that has a filter on it so that the animal doesn't get out, escape, um, or so we don't lose a sample in general. A little uh, sea cucumber -y type of thing on the left. Yeah. So we um, are actually looking for sea cucumbers deeper than 3,000 meters for collection. Oh, okay. So this one? Uh, we got to judge the size. They want it largely intact. Um, they're looking at the gut contents. Um, so if it's too big to go on the slurp, then it's kind of a no-go. Good. And fish on in there, please, Dave. 
I think at this stage, because we're a little bit um, under Argus, this would be a stop a ship and backtrack in order to collect this. It's uh, I don't think we can get it on the fly at this stage. So that's about a half hour plus excursion. Just uh, giving you an idea of the time limitations if we choose to collect. Okay. Well, why don't we leave this one and maybe start uh, uh, chopping up our ship moves so that we... Have some pauses. Oh, yeah, exactly. All right, so there's 14 meters left on the ship move. I'll just kind of hold that there when it's finished, and uh, Argus will swing. Pretty laid back, I'd say. Argus has about another 60 meters now, plus 14. So yeah, 70, 75 meters to go in its swing. Um, but I will pause there, and we can try to plan on having just farther ahead, so we have some time in the bank for a quick slurp if we see one. Okay, yeah, thanks. And we're still at uh, 3,800 plus meters, so we have a fair bit of room left to find some of the s'more cucumbers. Yeah, like Granny said, I'll, I'll, um, I'll stay at the end of my leash there, and then hopefully yeah. bank in enough time. We can just boogie up there. Adam, just for kind of attention watch, maybe that could be our cool attention watch team name. Attention watch, <laughs> stress watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're at uh, fifteen thousand seven hundred. So, yep. Roger that. Those of you who were perhaps checking the website earlier today, we did have to delay our dive a little bit. We're watching the weather. It's a little bit choppy. We originally planned to dive. Looks like in Argus there's a couple of blocky features coming up that are casting a shadow. So we'll see as we approach that with her. Thanks to all of our viewers for joining us for our first dive at the expedition. Feel free to send your messages in to the chat. A question about Hercules. Um, does it have a separate still camera, or do we take frames from the video feed? It the does. Can upper right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're taking a uh, still image every thirty seconds. Dave, go ahead and do a partial there, please. See what brand we got here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Huh. 
I cannot tell. Mm. It's just like a rusty can. Rusty can. It kind of looks cool, though. It's been That's here good. for a while. Yeah. Yeah, a little habitat. Yeah, I can't tell if that's weird crusting yeah. or, yeah, or a picture or a bolts or something. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Can't tell. Huh. All right. Pull wide, please. Yeah. So what's the pressure where we are diving currently? That's a good question. It's pretty <laughs> math. Uh, you can do like a quick, math? I think there's a quick calculation you can do. It's about 1.5 times your water depth, which is not totally accurate, but it gives you a pretty good estimate in PSI. So if we're at, say, 4,000 meters, it's probably about uh, 6,000 PSI. And I believe that's... Is it one bar every 10? Or one atmosphere every 10 meters? Yeah, you can also one do it that way, too. One atmosphere every 10 meters. Or every 30? Is it every 30? I don't remember. It was 10? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. There's a couple yeah. different quick... 10 meters at 30 feet. calculations. Yeah. Adam, a question. Are all of the rock formations we're seeing volcanic in origin? Yeah, they're all volcanic in origin, but they've been coated with a thick layer of manganese and, and iron oxide. So what looks like lumpy rocks were, was probably much more angular and rough when it first formed. And, and it's been kind of smoothed out by this slow accretion of these crusts. Uh, but this entire surface is volcanic, uh, except for the thin dusting of, of sediment that's on top of it. And you see, you know, it, it's it's not a monotonous slope, right? We have parts that are really smooth, and those are lava flows that are moving very quickly, and parts that are really lumpy, uh, which are called pillows, and those are lava flows that are moving much more slowly. And the difference is, um, you know, the, push on in there, please? the crust forms on the hot lava as it cools, and when the lava moves slowly, that crust can kind of encase it like a balloon. And when it's moving quickly, that crust doesn't have time to, to stop the flow. I don't know if this Wait, is an old it. tunicate structure or if it's... Yeah, oh, sorry. There was someone last time in the science chat interested in these. He, I can't remember the name of them, but he's suspecting there's something living in them. Huh. Uh, we like sat and watched one for a while to see if we could see anything. We didn't see anything. Hmm. I've never seen that. Oh, oh, wide. Oh, running to run. Yep. Might need to come up. Yeah. So the speed of the lava eruption is only it's, it's purely viscosity that controls that here. In this case, because all the lava was the same composition, the viscosity was probably the same, and it's basically. Uh, could be the temperature that, that changes the viscosity a little bit or the amount of crystals in it uh, but mostly it's how much is it getting pushed from behind you know oh okay okay there we go that's better so in the <laughs> the bathymetric map of the seafloor we're moving up kind of what looks like a smooth slope into an area of a ridge. Uh, and, you know, it's somewhat expected that the ridge is, is made up of these pillows, which uh, kind of build on each other and can form taller structures than those really smooth lava flows. Uh, Adam, just so you know, the ship has been holding here, and Argus is just about caught up. We probably have another 10 or 15 meters to go. Um, so we can pause here and kind of do a little more looking around, um, or I can call in another ship move. They take about five minutes to start rolling. Yeah, so I'd say why don't we you know, move along contour 
you know, one way or the other, just to sure. see if we can come across some of those uh, sampling targets for uh, sea cucumbers, for example, and then we can. Do you have a preference north, northeast, or southwest along? I think northeast will get us maybe closer to. Yeah, let's go northeast. Okay. Go ahead and push on in there, please. All right, Jess, so uh, we'll try to stay a long contour, if not a little bit up slope. Roger. Oh. So we'll go uh, zero, three, Would zero. Would that one fit in the um, slurp? I'll Is that up. a sea cucumber? So. Kind of yeah, that's a sea pig, definitely. Sea pig. That's a uh, Oletherian for sure. Great. That looks like it'll... If we can get it without um, destroying it in the process, I think we should. Yeah, this would be perfect. Roger. How are we looking here? Any for a sample? I think that will be okay. Roger. But I don't know that for sure. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> full wide. Yeah. You want to keep a good eye on that winch there? Yep. No worries. Keep an eye on it. How's it look as far as our hose goes? I'm not too little far. I mean, uh, diameter. Oh, I think it'll squish. Okay. We're on jar five right now. Yes, and I can move that around. All right, Jake, you want to give it a flush there real quick? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. That's pretty low flow, isn't it? 100%. Roger. Huh. All right, let's just go ahead and try collecting it then. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time. All right. Go ahead and switch over to jar one. Slurp sampler oh. or not. There you go. 100%. Oh. Um, so you're not going to go, go ahead and reduce the percentage. Yep. Oh, dear. That's not what you want right now. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, that is oh. something. You or wanna, you jumped right in. I've met zero percent right. suction right now. So interesting. We could uh, stow it in the front. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Might I recommend we move a little up slope? I'll yeah. mark a I'll mark a position here. Do you want me to increase suction while we're just? No. Moving? Go ahead and or maybe about to twenty percent or so. Twenty percent. All right. All right. I'm gonna come on up here, Jake. This is simple zero zero three. This is gonna be zero zero three. Roger. Or do we wanna wait till it's Yeah, I just found wanna its home? I just wanna make a note oh, of the, the position. position. I think hollow third Definitely not when you want to press through. That depth mm -hmm. was uh nice press. three eight one five. I don't think it should move too much more than that once once you get up there. Roger that. Ready? The ship's not moving right now. That's correct. Yeah, and we've been paused for quite a bit, so Argus is just getting settled with its final position. All right, let's park it here again. All right.
All right, go ahead and looks like you want to push out in there a bit there, Dave, please. Yeah. I'm looking more interested in at the end here. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in a bit. So they're interested in the gut content, so we'll have to slow ramp up if, so we don't yeah. do any damage. All right, Jake, go ahead and turn on suction again there. 30%. There you go. I think it moved a little bit. 50%. There we go. Maybe we can watch the hose. Mm. Oh, wide, please. See it go up? I think I just saw it go up. Did you? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I see more flow coming bubble. through. Now we're watching in that. Let's see if we get it. Coming through. It's in there. It's in. It's in? Yeah, oh. cut it. All right. Roger. So are we That's still, uh, do we still need to move forward or can we pause here for a moment? We can pause. We're, it, look, it looks like we're pretty settled. Uh, Jess, once you get that oops, stowed, mm -hmm. uh, since we're sitting right here, why don't we take a push core in this little sediment pocket? Yeah, we probably won't be able to get a push core here. Um, because you think the sediment's not thick enough? Yeah. So. All right, Adam. So this is about the depth here. Okay. Of that. So that's about so. two centimeters. <laughs> Yeah, it's about as steep as the fingers go here. Okay. So. All right. But maybe we'll find a good sediment pocket somewhere else. But yeah, these are, this is all pretty shallow sediment. What are you interested in in the sediment? Uh, so one of the things I'm interested in the sediment, I mean, we can certainly look for in fauna, so the types of animals that mm -hmm. live in the sediment. Uh, but also I'm interested in looking for volcanic ash, that can get preserved in, mm. in sediments. And yeah. uh, here you might expect some of that <laughs> to come from uh, the Hawaiian Islands, or, you know, the active <laughs> volcanism there. Okay. <laughs> um, Adam, do we want to continue along this contour or since we got this sample of the... No, I think that because we, we got that nice uh, sea pig that we can just keep moving up the slope. Roger okay. that. Uh, I think probably three two zero again. Let me just double check our trajectory. Roger. Yeah, three two zero. Under meters. Bridge nav. Let's do one more step. One hundred meters bearing three two zero. Thank you. Adam, we had a question about uh, what is the source of the manganese buildup? Yeah, so uh, that's a that's a fantastic question. So the manganese and iron are are dissolved in uh, in the seawater, and the mechanisms by which they it precipitates onto the rocks. Um, are not fully understood. So some would say that it's uh, microbially mediated, so it needs microbes there to help catalyze the, the precipitation. Uh, and some would say it just happens because uh, there's a surface there for, it, for the, the iron and manganese to nucleate on. Um, one thing that that's certain is that it accretes very, very slowly, like a millimeter uh, per million years. So when we see crusts here that are uh, centimeters thick, it represents a 
huge kind of period of time. Um, Coralie, who's working on these samples, is going to look at the very, very outermost bit of the crust to compare with the seawater that's next to it. Uh, some folks look at it through the whole crust and, and try and use it as an archive to see what the ocean was like in the distant past. But it can uh, precipitate out as well as be diagenetic. Of white stalks. Yeah. There's coral sighting, perhaps? Could be. I haven't seen many. Yeah. Or are they like tiny Walterias or something? Let's have a good look. All right, Dave, you want to go ahead and push in on this stock here? Little tiny... Bamboo whip? Bamboo, or... Uh... Ah. First coral on the dive. Yeah. Hey, hey. Or is it... Right. Yeah. Uh, we can wait Sorry for, for the... Asako is in the chat, but um, she's got a bit of a delay before she'll see it. Yeah. I get it centered up here for you guys here. I'd say a bamboo. Solid guess. Very cool. Can't quite get a sense of the intertentacular sclerites, so it's mm. difficult for me to say. Yes, <laughs> you're right there, Renny. <laughs> you might want to get your vision checked. Yeah, I see those sclerites clear as, as clear day. day. Oh, why are they <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Was that full zoom, Dave? I yeah, it sure is. And okay. I'm uh, chasing focus as it uh, as it rolls around a little sure. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Asaka's seeing it. She's typing it. Okay. All right. Full wide there. Yeah, we got to go. Thank you. Looks like we started to move a little. Starting to feel the roll. Uh, bamboo is the most likely. What was that? It's likely? Or Most clip? likely, Most yeah, likely. but she couldn't see it well enough to tell. All right, Jess, you got one for the bingo card. There well, we go. Half, a half a one for the bingo card. Half a one. <laughs> Unconfirmed. Yeah. Unconfirmed bingo card, I gotcha. A follow-up uh, about that manganese crust. One of our viewers would like to know if it's very hard. Uh, it is not very hard. In fact, it's pretty crumbly it can be pretty cr crumbly um one of the cool things about the the crust is that it scavenges uh what we call rare metals from from the water so another holothurian right there that big purple thing yeah. cobalt yttrium uh nickel all sorts of things that are that are not real abundant but they get concentrated in these uh in these crusts what did Ooh. you call this, Renny? Oh, I think okay. it's another Holothurian. Okay. Is that a sea cucumber? Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's going to do a little dance. Yeah. A little move. dance. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. That is great. Come on, take off there. Bring wow. So pretty. There it is. There we go. <laughs> that one's not fitting in the hose. That's a, that that's a big boy. That is not fitting Jesus. in the hose at all. No way. <laughs> all right. Like, this neighborhood's too crowded. Yeah. Moving. Yeah. One of our viewers offers, hold me closer, purple dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and do a quick zoom there, Dave, and then we'll boogie on. See it swimming. Very cool. Yeah, the lasers are for judging the size of what we're looking at. 
They're 10 centimeters apart. All right, and away she goes. Very cool, full wide, please. The color is fantastic. It's gonna have to zoom up, I think. Roger that. There's another one of the Althurians. The pink one. Oh, yeah. The Brasingids are okay. We're seeing more life. Yeah. Good snap zoom here there, Dave. What we got going on? I think it's an urchin. What is that? You think an urchin? Spindly? Spiny? Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. I've never seen one like that. Yeah. Seems like a high spindle to, <laughs> to, to body ratio. <laughs> Good observation. Yeah. <laughs> Mark that down. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. All right, full way, please. Jessica, what's our tension looking like recently? Sorry? Tension? tension. Oh, um, it's still 15, though. Yeah. It was dropping to 14. Now it's 15, too. Mm. Yeah. But we're all right for now. Like a sponge, a sponge here? yeah. No. Yeah. You're right, so we are seeing more life around here. It's good. Seems to me a Correct. bit of sediment, comparatively. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what that one's called, but I saw a picture of it yesterday. Is it a... Nope, not going to try. <laughs> not really sure. I was going to ask if it was a foraid of some kind, but I don't know. If that's that's, that was my original guess. Yeah. This seems like it has a little more bulbous. Yeah. A little shrimp associate in there or something. Yeah. I'm about to go soon. Just yeah. More sure. All right, full wide, please. Looks like it might be pretty steep here, so I might want to get some vertical. Roger that. Some. I'm in the bank. Yeah. Well, not pretty steep, but steeper than we've been seeing.
Can I come up a bit there, Jake? You know, looking down on Herc, you can see that the morphology of the C4 has changed to being a lot more pillows than we were seeing further down the slope. Yeah. Seems like maybe that has a that's had a correlation with a bit more surfaces for life. Ooh, Ooh. there's some nice coral. Ooh, coral. Really tiny, yeah. tiny polyps. Yeah. What are you? Wait a minute. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Oh, yeah. You can see the shelf here on. Yeah. All right. Let's get there. Okay, we'll try that. Go ahead and push on in there, Dave. Is that a Chrysogorgia of some kind? Really tiny. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, we're going to have to go. Oh, I yeah. And we might have to, z z like, yeah. Oh, I please. Joy gain up. <laughs> 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 and we're seeing a pink, pink wall up there. Yeah. Pink wall. That's just not a, a morphology of of Chrysogorgia that I've seen before, but the the struct the polyps kind of looked like it might be in that. Looks like a Militaris. What was the name of it? Militaris. Militaris is that what family? What? Oh, it just came in on the chat. Um, oh, okay. It's a Rumilagorgia militaris. Oh. It's a good thing we have coral experts. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd just be throwing out names willy nilly. <laughs> but there's an incredible diversity of. Of corals, right? You got to be an expert to know all the different yeah. species. It's actually why it's really, you know, cool to do exploration on this ship is we have someone on shore who's an expert uh, helping us identify things. You got some geologists and, you know, looking at the rocks and, uh, you know, bringing, bringing a big diverse team together to understand an area like this. Looks like we're coming to the last uh, seven meters of our ship move. So I'll just call in another one. I think we'll continue on the path. That sounds good. Can someone talk about the different ways we could sample coral if we did want to take a sample? Yeah, those, there's some 
specialized uh, coral snips on one of the manipulators. So we obviously don't want to uh, sample a, a full coral uh, that's taken tens to hundreds or maybe even longer years to grow. Uh, so use the snips to get a small piece of uh, one of the ends of the coral that doesn't do damage to the whole organism and uh, use that for uh, taxonomic identification and kind of genetic identification uh, up on the ship and in the lab. Seems like we're getting more sediment cover as we move up this slope. Yeah. Maybe we'll find a, a patch of it to try to core. Yeah. I have the feeling every time I, I see a spot like that, Jessica's going to reach in and say, that's one centimeter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we do the little, you know, probe test with the manips first, especially on this type of terrain. Yeah. I think last last expedition, last leg, we tried five times <laughs> to get one. Yeah. But it was just too shallow or yeah. They had a bonus level because they had tiny manganese nodules on top. So they were kind of even though they're not that heavy, they were just enough to oh, kind of make everything bust through the yeah. bottom. Like I know that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> one of our viewers has a great question. They wanted to know if the, pre the difference in pressure between the seafloor and the sea surface ever causes problems with the samples? Um, yes, yeah. depending on the samples. Um, the ones that have air in them um, do not do well coming up to the surface due to the pressure changes. Um, like sea cucumbers, they don't often come up looking very pretty. But the corals and sponges do just fine. They come up looking really nice. Uh, it's the temperature change that affects them the most. Hmm. And do we know if those branches that get snipped will likely grow back? I think they do think that they grow back. Yeah. What's that? This angular piece? What is that? Trash? It's like is a that what you're looking crust at? Or yeah, something. go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Trash. No, it's what? I don't know. Rubber. I think it might be crust, or not. Not like manganese crust, but um, fractured edge or something. Yeah, sometimes the the pillow crust. Yeah, something. the crust of the lava can peel off from the oh. the molten part and leave a little. I think I'm a little wide there. Rim like that. That's good there. In fact, sometimes the pillows can uh, drain and leave this big hollow shell behind. Go ahead and push on in there quick. Like a lava tube type situation? That's great. Yeah, like a mini lava tube. It may only be like a meter across, but uh, you know the crust is formed on the outside. It's solid, yeah. and then the liquid mm. uh, interior okay, full kind of spills out. I read the dramatic exit there guys but I should probably get going anyway Adam Jason would like to know if there's a difference between the rock pillows you mentioned and the pillow lava uh, no they're they're one in the same so the you know as you're looking at the video you see each kind of bulb of 
of lava. They're kind of all joined together here, but uh, each one is a pillow, and pillow lava is just a collection of all those pillows together. One thing to keep an eye out for is just like in in bigger lava flows, columnar jointing forms in these pillows. It forms kind of radially from the outside in. And in many of the ones that we're coming across, even though it's been smoothed over by the crust, you can see some of those columnar joints uh, kind of uh, coming outward from, uh, or coming inward from, from the outside, or, or you could think of them as radiating outward from the center. One of our viewers must be hungry because they thought they looked like stacks of pancakes. Here's a great question, I believe, probably for our data, data logger. Is there someone on the team who screenshots and catalogs what we see? Yes, that is exactly what my position as a data logger is on watch. So I'm constantly making notes about what I'm seeing in the um, substrate, so geological obs observations, as well as observations about the biology and the water column itself. Um, and then I'm capturing shots of the video. This is a pretty slow current we're seeing, correct? Yeah, currents uh, move pretty slowly this deep. And yep. uh, we don't have much in the water column right now that would help us I identify, but pretty much all the movement you see and stuff in the water column is because we're moving towards the, the particles, not the current pushing them along. This is a fun question. How does it feel being a modern day explorer? Quite exciting. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, really exciting. Yeah, it's cool to to be the first people to kind of set eyes on this part of our planet and not just to to be here but to have everyone, you know, watching from from home and seeing it as well. And I got to share some of it with my students today. I had three interactions with different classes back in Kansas, and I have four more tomorrow just in Kansas. I think we have uh, also tomorrow a, a live event going out on Facebook and YouTube. That's right, 1045. Local time. 1045 local, so uh, wherever you are. Um, Check your social media source. Yep. Find the link and your local time for that event. And Adam, our lead scientist, and Allison, our expedition lead, will be tag-teaming. Are tag we in a good position them. to... Um, 
pull it out and look at stuff, or are we just catching up right now? Yeah, we can get a little bit further out and head, and yeah, we can slow down if you like. Yeah, once we get caught up a little bit. Okay. Did you see something down there you were interested yeah, in? Yeah, there's like, we passed quite a few of the white anemones that I'd like to get a zoom on. Okay. Okay. Well, keep an eye on that as we. Sure thing. One of our viewers is asking about oxygen requirements um, for organisms. Is, is that a limiting factor at this step? Um, yeah. I'm not a biologist, but <laughs> nope. yeah, the, I think they're, the water's oxygenated enough for, for most of the organisms down here. The, uh, they can see our Grafana page from our live um, web page. If you click on more data, you should be able to pull up what we're looking at as far as O2 saturation levels are. Yeah, this looks like there's a couple ways to look at it. Um, oxygen concentration versus saturation. We're sitting at 30% saturation. Uh. So there's a, a kind of minimum uh, concentration of oxygen in the in the upper ocean around 800 meters, and that's really kind of marking where the you know the productivity or the biological productivity in the upper ocean is consuming that oxygen, and then it slowly creeps back up to uh, the, the concentrations that we see at these depths around it's around 30% uh, saturation as Sarah just said. They might be chitons that we're seeing, a few of the little white things on the The white ones, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Just saw another one, but we'll get a little bit ahead and we'll go zoom on the next one. Nice. Hmm. Cute little guy going by. I'm surprised that wasn't a higher one than 15. Mm. <laughs> So a little more vertical here. Yeah. Flow seems to have changed a bit. Yeah, it's kind of chaotic. It, <laughs> it's possible that we could be coming up on kind of a rift zone where some of the flows originated. Hmm. One of our viewers would like to know why we're targeting this specific depth. Well, what we'd like to do is is cover as much of the depth of the seamount as possible to see how uh, both the environmental conditions and the and the kind of ecosystem changes as a function of depth. So we've started at 3,900 meters, and we're going to go all the way to the top of the seamount at 1,800 meters, and um, try and do that on a few of the seamounts in this chain. All right, Dave, go ahead and work your magic. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a mushroom. <laughs> 